Since its establishment in 1989, the program set out deliberately to build research, local research capacity. Our vision is for African-led research solving African and global health problems. Initially, we did this on an ad hoc basis based on availability of payer funding from research projects. However, in 2008, we established a training program which later on became the initiative to develop African research leaders' ideal. The program is based on a framework that we call Attract, Train and Retain Framework. We have schemes for attracting young Kenyans and Africans to research through attachments for secondary school graduates, undergraduate students, and recent graduates. We then provide high quality masters and PhD training, and we promote retention of the people we train, either locally or within research that is relevant to Africa through postdoctoral training. The quality of our training is guaranteed through three components. The first is the training environment within which the students learn. We give the students exposure to cutting edge research. We provide them with opportunities to participate in scientific debates and conferences. The second component is competence development, which we provide through high quality supervision, mentorship, generic skills training. The third component is a strong operational support that ensures that the students are focusing on their training rather than on operational or administrative issues. For example, we provide the students with financial support so that they don't have to work part-time while at the same time trying to complete their education. We also ensure that we regularly monitor their progress and support them should there be any issue that is impeding their progress. Students, especially at PhD level, are provided with an extra or an additional independent advisory team, which provides both academic or technical and pastoral support for the students and the supervisors. As a result, we have a very high rate of comp timely completion among our students and also very high quality output coming through from those trainings. Since 2008, we have trained about 800 people, amongst them over 110 PhD students, over 150 master students, and over 260 uh, graduate interns. Over 80% have remained in research either at the program or elsewhere in Kenya and in Africa, or even if they're working abroad, have remained in research that is relevant to Africa. Many of them have now won their own grants, and they are now training the next generation of African researchers. And indeed, quite a large proportion of the current research leaders within the program itself have come through our training program. We have had a huge number of research publications coming through. To date, our lifetime count exceeds 1,200 publications, many of them in high-impact journals. We have many examples where work that was funded through the capacity building uh, uh, grants, such as I deal, have had real impact on the way health is provided healthcare is provided in Kenya and in the continent and globally. In the recent COVID-19 pandemic, a large number of the researchers from the program who led in supporting Kenya's response in terms of testing, in terms of sequencing, and in terms of modeling the progress of the pandemic were actually trained through the capacity building programs that we run. There's got to be uh, a lot of investments, both in terms of financial resources, but also in terms of human resources. It is important to start with a large group 
of high quality or well, highly talented uh, students or young graduates because it's inevitable that there will be some level of attrition. Some of the people will not remain in research. Nonetheless, this is still very useful in that those who have had experience within the program not only follow the typical or the classic research pipeline, but some of them move off to go to other areas where their knowledge is still applied. I would then therefore like to just invite you to listen to a few presentations or just a few stories from the, some of the people that we have trained. Uh, my name is Jane Mwangi. Um, my research journey started back in 2015. Uh, when I joined Pony University to pursue a bachelor's degree in microbiology and that is where I was introduced to bioinformatics at around 2018 where I was enrolled as a student on attachment here at Cambridge Wellcome Trust Research Program uh, on bioinformatics. Uh, later on I interned at uh, PUBREC, that is Pony University Biosciences Research Centre for one year and then I later got a two-year master's fellowship in bioinformatics under IDEAL and ENBIT. Uh, my master's research work was on genomic and subgenomic characterization of SARS-CoV-2 samples collected uh, in Kenya. Here at KWTRP, we have implemented a genomic surveillance platform for whole genome sequencing of SARS-CoV-2 samples. Uh, which implements both Illumina and Oxford nanopore technologies. So the use of this Arctic protocol has allowed us to sort of quantify these subgenomic RNAs. And the key finding is the expression of RF10, which on its presence um, indicated a severe case or deceased case, as was seen in some of our samples, and which has also been reported uh, previously in other studies. However, some other studies were actually contrary to our finding, and um, which indicated had like read abundances are quite uh, limited or low number of reads supporting that particular ORF. So this ongoing study utilizes this genomic sequence data to understand the biology of the virus in terms of these subgenomic RNAs. And we're actually keen on finding out more on their role in terms of disease severity and pathogenicity. My name is Lewis Murugu. I am a former MSc immunology student at the Cameroon Camtra Research Program. I joined the program in uh, 2019 and before that I did my undergraduate studies at the University of Nairobi and then uh, joined Chapaigo where I worked as a research assistant. So then I transitioned to Kemri as a master's student and um, joined uh, Professor Fay Dossier's group where I've been working on uh, bioengineering of monoclonal antibodies uh, for enhanced immune function. So basically my work was to uh, try and improve function uh, of antibodies specific to uh, the malaria parasite. So what we've seen is that uh, the antibody is important for immunity against malaria and monoclonal antibodies are coming up as uh, potential new tools for uh, malaria immunotherapy. So for my work, I was interested in trying to uh, improve the function of some of the antibodies that we've um, expressed and um, um, gotten from the group. So to that end, uh, one of the antibodies that I was, I've been working on showed a two-fold increase in neutrophil activation and that's an uh, exciting thing as some of these therapeutics might be evaluated in small animal models for future studies. My name is Mary Bita. I am a fourth year PhD student registered at the University of Oxford. I joined uh, Cambridge Wellcome Trust Research Program in 2015 as um, the first cohort of postgraduate diploma students in health research methods, um, which is done in collaboration with Kwan University. Um, my current, my research work has been around mental health interventions that aim to address the gap between people with these disorders who access care and those who do not. And I tackle two key components. One is access to care, and the second one is stigma, which forms a core component of my PhD work. Uh, for the work around stigma, I was funded by the Welcome Trust Public Engagement Fund in 2019 uh, to set up a, a community-level awareness campaign, which we dubbed Diffusimo. And Diffusimo uses uh, participatory approaches, which means that stakeholders in mental health are involved in um, developing, implementing, and even evaluating interventions to address stigma. And uh, uh, in total, we have about 14 collaborators that work on this project and preliminary analysis of our work that measures different components of stigma show that these interventions are indeed effective. 
Um, my future hope is that we can be able to evaluate these interventions using more robust research methods such as randomized control trials and we can even employ other research methods like qualitative methods to understand exactly how and why um, these interventions work with the aim that our work will feed into, will feed into the wider global work of trying to bridge the gap um, in mental health. Makobu Kimani. I am a medical doctor and um, my journey began about over a decade ago. I graduated from the University of Nairobi as a medical doctor, then went on to do my uh, obligatory work with the government. I worked in Western Kenya for a couple of years and then shortly after that I, I applied and got taken up at the University of Nairobi for a master's in public health. Um, shortly after that I got very interested in research and started doing HIV related research in key populations. At the time I was working with female sex workers. In uh, 2016 I applied and was accepted for a, a Wellcome Trust funded uh, Delta's uh, studentship, a PhD studentship where I looked, my work was primarily on HIV prevention in, again in key populations but I shifted a little and now I was working with um, uh, men that have sex with men and transgender women. A key finding of that work was from my work, I produced what was the first HIV uh, incidence estimate in, in Africa for transgender women. Um, I was awarded a PhD in 2021 by the University of Amsterdam. I have since transitioned into vaccinology on the back of the COVID-19 pandemic. I am now leading COVID-19 vaccine studies. <laughs>